You know, in this place, Rusty Lake, it's so relaxing. Water is calm, been fishing for a few hours, and... Oh, I caught something, eh? Hey guys, it's Raz Jazz. I play games, analyze stuff, not just games, and make theories. My overthinking is your entertainment, and welcome to my first video, a video centered on one of my favorite game series, Rusty Lake. Rusty Lake is a game series of substance and complexity, one that I want to make theories on. However, before I can do that, I need to make sure we all have the chronology straight. Warning! If you haven't played Rusty Lake games, I highly recommend that you play the series before watching this video. I think the best way to play the games is in the release date order. There's no way to really play the games in chronological order without exhaustive game hopping, but check them out. A few are paid, but they're honestly all steals, and there may seem to be a lot of them, but many of them are pretty short. Alright, the majority of part 1 of this timeline is going to be covering the earliest origins of the lake that we know of so far. First though, two key events happened before this. From Cubescape Paradox, we know that Caroline Islander was born in summer 1750, while Jacob Islander was born in winter 1775. Well, that's that. I mean, that's the only stuff we really need to know before Rusty Lake Paradise for now. And now, without further ado, let's begin. Rusty Lake Paradise. We got a lot for the timeline in this game, even if we don't have specific dates. The only real indication of a date that is given is on the letter from Jacob's father, the 22nd of April, 1796. We get a voiced out intro. Since I had received the message of my mother's death, the blurred childhood memories started to become more clear. Now Jacob, he seems to have repressed childhood memories, perhaps an indicator of trauma. Before entering the island, it dawns on the player that there is about to be a series of plagues, and right from the first plague, it's clear that these plagues are homages to the plagues of Egypt in the time of Moses. When Jacob comes ashore, the first people he encounters are two men, presumably family members, due to the fact that only his family owns the island, as noted when Jacob narrates. The older one doesn't even greet him, rudely asking for shrimp. But I mean, his dad doesn't even act surprised at him being there or sentimental. His son has just come back after who knows how long, and he casually asks to get some drink? Yeah, this family seems sus already. Now let's take a close look at his mother, Caroline Islander. Rusty Lake definitely has a deeply planned lore, because this woman actually appears in Cube Escape Case 23. Rusty Lake Paradise came out more than half a dozen games after this one, yet there she is. And where do you find her full painting? In the chapel of Rusty Lake. The references to religion don't seem to be mere coincidences, as will be discussed later on in future videos. Other than this painting, another one shows a family portrait, clearly indicating the whole close family. It shows that there are two characters that are yet to be met, Jacob's sister and grandmother. Jacob is also shown to be the oldest child, Thanks to Paradox, we know he is now 20, but the photo is 15 years ago. Either the canon got messed up, or he was one giant 5 year old, but I mean, in the universe of Rusty Lake, it's not really that abnormal. So then as Jacob, we talk to Jacob's father, who reveals that his wife was a very spiritual person, and that she prayed for Jacob to return. It also reveals an important detail that once the mother died, Paradise Island began to crumble. Eventually, Jacob makes his way to the shore of the island, the other side, and his mother appears to him, fully confiding in him how to stop the plagues, her memories, once again showing significance to the plot. This moment also shows that his mother trusts him. Her corrupted soul only appears to him and no other family member, possibly a reason his father needed him so badly. So Jacob finally gets to the other shore, and spots something in the lake. 
Caroline's casket rises to the surface, and inside it resides her first found memory. Interestingly enough, Caroline's first memory shows her witnessing her family sacrificing something to enlighten them. Once the memory fades away, Jacob's able to get it, and he brings it to the special building, places it into the well, and the lake stops bleeding. The way he stops it is interesting though, because it happens at a location remarkably similar to where Caroline stands in, in the painting referenced earlier in Case 23. What is the name of this painting that has been mentioned twice? The Lady of the Lake. This title isn't a mere aesthetic choice. It is now confirmed she's a real person, and that she was connected to the lake, as was her family in some form. And she is played by an actress in West Lake Theatre and other games as well. So for you to live on that long and have a legacy like that way past your death, it really shows that you're someone special indeed. Lake 2, Frogs. By now we know both Jacob's brother and uncle are basically nutjobs. Exhibit A, Exhibit B. But we haven't met his sister yet, so maybe she's normal. Good to feel your presence again, brother. I guess not. Oh well. Anyways, notice her wording. That'll be important later. Later, with the second achievement, we get a bit of foreshadowing with the dear masked family member. Back to David, Jacob's brother, we get a strange line. I'm not really sure what to make of it, but feel free to comment below. Going back to our lovely grandma, Jacob sees the second memory of his mother. It's him! But as a baby, cute. Blake 3, Nats and Lights. Uh, they're everywhere. Okay, that line's not really that important to the timeline, but I don't know, it's just really funny. Moving on. Now let me tell you, if you think your quarantine haircut was bad, well, I'm sure it wasn't as bad as this. Thanks for hearing me out. Okay, okay. From here on out, I'll stop. Okay, sorry about interlobing with all those puns. Yeah, I know, I'm terrible. Anyway, next it's time to deal with your brother, who has low blood sugar, and you help him by giving him way too many sweets and threatening him into getting worse diseases. But then all of a sudden, he gets swarmed and becomes a giant cocoon. After slowly noping out of that situation, an easter egg you can come across as Jacob is that if you put a certain flower on a plate, Harvey will appear. Now this easter egg is wild because it most likely confirms that Harvey was alive at this time. By the end of the third plague, Jacob witnesses his mother's picture becoming corrupted, reflecting the reality of her current corrupted soul. The third memory shows Jacob age up more and with his family, like the picture from the first plague. Notice how Caroline is holding a rose. Definitely the same person referenced here. Jacob plops in a cube once again, and the cycle repeats. Plague 4. Flies. Now if this plague like the others, I'm focusing on key events and connections to other games. So first off, notice how Grandma is, well, in hot water. A reference to one of the hotel guests in Rusty Lake Hotel. Now remember what Jacob's sister said when she greeted him? Elizabeth reveals a truth that was hinted at before, that she's blind. Speaking of blind, I don't think anyone normal would have seen this coming. Yeah, nothing to see here. Another nod to the identical animal guests in Rusty Lake Hotel is made. Pigeon, rabbit. One important thing as well in this play is more owl imagery, something heavily featured in Paradise. Back at the cube well, Caroline appears, giving very important secret dialogue. Don't let them use their memories. That line really shows that she trusts Jacob, and that the rest of his family is up to no good with her memories. Speaking of Caroline's memories, Jacob's dad is found trying to infiltrate her memories, but they're not playing. But the reason why he is so anxious with the cube and saying this line is due to the fact that he can't access her memories. That's why Jacob's so important. 
otherwise the cube would just be playing the memory in his hands like it usually does with Jacob. Now going on to the book on the table, the first two pages foreshadow the ending of the whole storyline of this game. The next two pages show two common recurring parts of Rusty Lake lore, the Samsara Cycle and the Elixir, two things that will be much more dwelled into depth later. Then, the two pages afterwards show the way memories can be extracted and the concept of the corrupted soul, otherwise known as the Hungry Ghost. Finally, the last two pages show some very interesting stuff. The lake does not only eat memories, but it also states that the memories should belong there in the first place. After flipping through the book, David pays a friendly visit to his father. Don't worry, he'll be fine. Well, once he's knocked out, it's the perfect opportunity to get the cube that the father had been trying to use for himself. And in that memory, it starts to show the real disturbing parts of Jacob's childhood. He looks scared out of his mind, while his dad tells the little boy about sacrifices. Yikes, those are some messed up family dynamics. Once the goods are gotten, aka the next cube, we're on to the next plague. The fifth plague, diseased livestock. <laughs> That's my grandma talking about me, Rip. I don't know about you, but I think a rusty lake burger is giving the Krabby Patty a run for its money. Okay, okay, jokes aside, we got more and more confirmation that there's a continuity between these events now, even with the supernatural elements. Unwrapping Jacob's father's head reveals that he's fine somehow, but he still has a pain from the moment where his son drills into his head. Then this. Oh my god. This has to be one of the Rusty Lake puzzles I hate the most. Up in the Unholy Trinity, with the domino game from Harvey's Box, and the puzzle game in Case 23. Anyways, after that journey, just to get more ingredients of the burger, once everything's gathered, you present the burger from diseased animals to your uncle. Then of course Jacob's dad claiming he won't touch the cattle since they're sick. Bro. You literally just watched your brother down a whole meal made of them and didn't even care to tell him? Alright, what did I expect? Anyways, Easter eggs, Easter eggs, Easter eggs. It's Easter eggs time. Catching a boar's shadow in the woods and following it leads you to a clearing to witness a full-blown boar in real life. Now we're really seeing things line up with Rusty Lake Hotel. The grandma is connected to the pigeon, David is connected to the rabbit, and now the uncle is connected to the boar. And if you thought I was stretching that out, there is no way you can't say that. This, the fact that the uncle is asking for toilet paper after pooping isn't a clear reference to this. Okay, down we go. And wait, that's Caroline. The memory is clearly occurring underground, which is why I drive Jacob's view into the sewer, or whatever the archaic basement of that toilet would have been. Once again, owl imagery. Alright, now what she's writing is actually the formula from the book that Jacob's dad had possession of. Plague 6, Boils. Ironically, we're now living this level in real life, and with this level comes a reference to the bubonic plague, a plague doctor, bird beak and all. I mean, we all know how much Rusty Lake loves its birds. The uncle has gotten boils from the burger, another case of continuity, but luckily with some humoral medicine, he's able to speak again. At this point, it's blatantly obvious he's connected to his animal when he says, Boar! 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 Indeed. Unlocking the sixth memory so far shows Jacob and his father wearing the deer mask, dripping a human heart above his son's head. Lovely. His line is also pretty intense and ominous to be speaking to a child, and there's the fact that his cult imagery is going up 100%. But wait, where's Caroline if this is her memory? She was probably spying or eavesdropping on them. Which leads us to... Plague 7. Hail. A nice snow day is had with the family. Grandma sings Christmas carols and encourages us to hit her head with multiple snowfalls. We also help David thaw out of ice and Elizabeth skate, but that's not super important. We vandalize and destroy our family's sacred cute monument. And then a lovely family moment with mom and dad, in the memory, where dad tries to sacrifice- I hate my voice cracks. Where dad tries to sacrifice Jacob, and mom pleads him to take her instead. 
Good thing she was eavesdropping last memory, am I right? Then off we go to Plague 8, Locus. There was a man, he is my dad. There was a man, all skin and bones. There was a man, no hairs under his nose. There was a man, hair gray as first light. There was a man who was really quite fat. <laughs> Did you hear them subtly throwing shade at each other? But one interesting detail is that there was a man, the last man and the man from the start. Those lyrics seem to be pointing at Jacob because you can win that round by pointing at any of the characters. Once again, an easter egg reveals a key plot point. Caroline claims that her memories are the key to her son's future. Following her corrupted soul leads you to her human form with an Elmas that ascends. By the way, while this has all been going on, there's been a giant locust terrorizing the island. And a lot of creatures are in harm's way, but the owl is the only one wise enough to float away. And then... we see that Caroline, lucky for Jacob, lets her son escape that horror freak show of a family. And this is probably why that poor kid has no recollection of his childhood and is being retaught everything by these memories. And then we're propelled into the darkness as we go into Plague 9. Darkness. Now this one is my personal favorite play due to the plot twist and atmosphere in this play. So in the hut in the woods, there now is this important painting. It talks of the day of the lake, ominous. We then get another serious grave moment with his family, with his dad, where he talks about the same prophecy that the painting had talked about. The glorious day of the lake is coming. <laughs> yep, this game's dark, but I love its weird humor. Next, the moon becomes blood red. Don't worry, the waterbenders are totally fine. At least I hope they are. Okay, back to the game. So we collect the moon's blood, or in this case, rock, along with various other material and grind them all up. Each of them corresponds to an individual color. Once we've solved enough codes, the top of the tower is accessible, and we signal a giant owl monument, which comes to shore. Going to the shore to check it out, Jacob spots an owl that was there earlier, now flying away in the nighttime sky. From the place it was perching, you receive your mother's bones. Yikes. And if you keep digging into the box, you get a crow egg, yet another easter egg, but this time it's literally an egg. Grinding your mother's bones gives you magical powder, hinting that indeed she had some mystical connection and powers to the lake. And then finally, you get to the fireplace. When the crow egg is thrown in, you get Mr. Crow. But notice that Mr. Crow appears as a shadow. Mr. Crow not appearing as a full fleshed out human being, or well like whatever he is, makes a lot of sense because as we'll see later in the timeline, he wasn't even born yet. And now it seems more likely that Harvey was existent in this time if he appeared as a full bird, but Mr. Crow didn't make a real and flesh appearance. But next comes something truly horrifying, the ninth memory. Your family is why your mother's death occurred, and not just by any means, burning at the stake. After that heavy reveal, Jacob probably slowly sludges to the last plague. The tenth plague, death of the firstborn. Sorry Jacob, you heard that right. 
Plague 10 is the death of the firstborn. I hope I am not the one that dies tonight. Dude, you know he's gonna die. You're obviously taunting him. He's the firstborn. You're literally the youngest child. Along with David, you encounter every family member in this plague, really showing the special nature of this one. Everyone's true color will show eventually. Tonight, the lake will show her true self to us. Be ready. Finally, you get to traverse it a well. Entering the chamber, you come across some puzzles, then solve them to enter a secret room. And in it, you find Mom. Well, her corrupted soul once again. She reveals that the last memory is also the last element of the elixir, revealing that the memories you've been collecting this whole time are so powerful because they form the elixir itself. My memories are the key, not only to the past, but also to the future. After talking of the future once again, she tells you to descend into the depths of the lake. Suing to its depths, Jacob sees a strange cube shadow, but this structure is extremely important, and we'll talk about it later in the timeline. Resurfacing on the way to the well, Jacob gives all his family members their correct masks. The last cube is placed, and then... By Jacob. But wait, it's Caroline's corrupted soul. She appears in Jacob's presence and begins to connect the memories to the elixir. Placing the owl mask on her gives a very vital easter egg, Dale and Laura. Dale and Laura will not be born for more than a century, but there they are in a vision. Jacob knows about them and their significance from that point. Finally, Jacob fuses with his mother's corrupted soul to become Mr. Owl. That's right, this whole game was an origin story for the mastermind of the lake, Mr. Owl. He finally reveals that paradise will become Rusty Lake Hotel. But before Hotel can be covered, we must start looking at the family of Mr. Crow. But that's for another time. Anyways, that's part one. Hope you enjoyed this video and that it added something new to your knowledge or clarified things within the timeline. Future timeline videos will have many more dates, but Paradise didn't really distinguish written dates so that's why there was a lack of them. I'll have more videos soon like I said on games, analysis, and theories. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and don't worry, if you do that you won't become a corrupted soul. I'll have lots more content, but we'll definitely be elaborating on the Rusty Lake universe as well. Take care, embrace your inner genius, stay rad, and I'll jazz it up with you guys in the next video. See ya!